We're live on the air, so don't say any Fs and stuff. We're live on the air, so we're live on the air, so don't say any Fs and stuff. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys because they're still here. Oh, Nobody's you're got... not a cop. No, no, you're. Dude, I don't love my daughter or some shit. Like you're holier than now or something. Dude, you're not a cop. Dude, you're not a there is no investigation. What's up? How's it going? Good to see you. Good to be here. Live from the MBD Production Studios, you're in the lab with your host, Joshua Diaz. There is no investigation. This boy has... There is not. Really? This, this wow, young man... It is to me. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the lab. I'm your host, Joshua Diaz. It's great to be here. Great to see you. As always, I got an interesting show for you tonight. Uh, as you can tell, the heat surrounding Don and Candace feels like it's at a fever pitch right now. Uh, they are under attack and I, of the truth. And if you've ever been like me or anybody with a history of any kind, most of the time you want to leave that. Most, most of the times you want to, you just want to leave that in the past. And I'm totally understandable. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't want their, their, bad behavior, long forgotten. Who wouldn't want that? And let me see here. We got Robert's girl and who just gifted. We got forget me, not gifted five lab memberships. It's very sweet of you. Angel P gifted a membership. Uh, we have Terry B gifting a membership as well. It's so appreciated you guys, thank you so much, and welcome to all the new members, subs, and everybody that is here. Now, we, like I said, we have an interesting show for you. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's on the tabooish side, so please, in the chat, please be respectful. Uh, you know, let's try not to go overboard. Now, I get it. I get. I get it. The stuff that we're going to talk about is not only shocking, uh, it's weird and it's hard to talk about. And then a lot of the times that turns into, uh, you know, you kind of were like, Oh crap. Like this is, you know, it's Dawn. So it's hard not to, to, to like, you kind of chuckle. You're like, Oh my God, that's some shocking stuff. That's some shocking stuff. And uh, it is. It is shocking. It, it's. it's. But you know what's even more shocking, and we'll, we'll get into all of this, is just really the, the research behind these kind of crimes. And we'll go into all of that uh, here in a little bit. Now, to lay the premise for you, a, a, a fellow YouTuber and... Um, 
who, by the way, some people, that's how the, all of this is. Some people like him. Some people don't trust me. That's how it is with me. You know, some people like me, some people don't, some people, you know, I know how on scene reporters are, whether you want to call them freelance YouTube reporters, I don't care. They're all the same and they all want the story and they go hard and they dig hard. And uh, a lot of the times the biggest threat to people when they're under investigation is investigative journalists because they will uncover things about you that you don't want anybody to know. And so that's why you have a lot of, why do you think that Don speaks to people that talk bad about him or that, that don't paint him in a favorable light? Why do you think that he, he wants to have some sort of control. He wants some sort of narrative. He wants some sort of say, and I've always said that. And people would always say, Josh, why do you let him on your show? Why do you let him on your show? And it's because if you're going to be accusing somebody of something that they probably should have the right to respond to you and to your audience, that's only fair that's kind of standard, you know, media broadcasting, podcasting 101 is that if you're going to rail against somebody, they have the right to defend themselves. But here we here's the difference when it comes to this report jo dropped by Jonathan Lee Richards. And uh, in my opinion, fantastic work, uh, by the way. Uh, here's the thing. How are you going to defend that? Now, I've seen people already start to defend it. The usual suspects, the, it, it's, it's insane to me, but I don't think like them. They don't think like me. So probably they think what, what I think or what we think is crazy, but I know what they think is crazy. And um, how do you defend it? How do you defend it? And Don's pissed because JLR is on his throat, just like I've been before, just like McDonough has been before. He hates it. He hates it. Now, this isn't showing up at hotel rooms. This isn't showing up to job sites. This is good old fashioned Freedom of Information Act stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> a request. It's, it's just, it is what it is, man. And, uh, don't, don't start this whole BS of it's not true. It's not true. The only defense that you're going to come up with, and it's going to suck, but you're going to, but whoever it is, will try it is you're going to take these crimes. And by the way, we're going to talk about these crimes a little bit in depth here. All right, there's a little bit we're going to you're these it's going to be shocking. It's going to be shocking because this is not a normal thing. Uh let me see. But none of this is normal. None of this has been normal. None of it will ever be normal. It's just not It's just not normal, okay? But we all we all realize that. We all realize that. It's good to see everybody. Sorry, I can't. I, I'm trying to keep up here, and and we got we got a lot going on. So, thank you again for being here. The only way is to say, "Hey, <laughs> I'm a changed man." And while I think that that's the route, and I don't know if Don has responded to this, it's probably best if he doesn't respond to it. Um, because at this point, I really believe that the people that are riding with Don are ride and die, gates of hell type stuff. And the people that uh, already dislike Don and feel a certain way about him, already feel about him, this just, just, this just really strengthens your, the hold that people have uh, in their beliefs. But I'll tell you this, this one is extremely, 
extremely difficult and damn near impossible to defend. And like I said, I've seen some people trying to do it. The allegation, excuse me, the arrest affidavit at the scene by the police officer. I've read it myself. I've also listened to, to JLR about this, but yet this is a legitimate report. This is a legitimate arrest. And he got dimed out by two little kids that he was freaking out because he was around a neighborhood that he shouldn't have been around. And he stole someone's underwear. And then lied about it, said that it was his wife's, his girlfriend's, and then finally admitted to doing that. Um, and the in the report, the cop notices Don kind of ducked down in front of the garage by a car that like kind of ducks, you know, ducks down and, um, you know, it's like, hold on one second here. Too much. He's ducking down. The cops looking at him. They can clearly see that he's ducking down. It's one of the, I don't know if any of you watch family guy when Peter Griffin hides in the box and the top of his head sticking out and he's laughing, he's going, eh, eh. and people are like, dude, he's in the middle of the room. You can see his head. Like he's right there. And he's like, eh. <laughs> I, I somewhat imagine it that way. Um, but you know, I can't be sure. Let me see here. But that to me, that's a bit what it, it seems like. Just, you know, a tad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, dude, you, you, you would think that uh, you could do a little bit. <laughs> it's stupidest, stupidest stuff ever. And that's also going to tie in to stuff that we have been reporting on for quite some time. for for a long time really and we've all taken grenades for it we've all been we've all been lashed out at we've all been you know people how dare you bring up old stuff yeah <laughs> you know what i mean how are we going to defend on now because I tell you what, it ain't just about this. It's about much more than some panty stealing, which, by the way, I can guarantee you that law enforcement doesn't take those crimes lightly. There has been literature on this stuff for a long time, because guess what? Pervs and peds love to do it. People who overpower and don't have a problem invading someone's space have no problem doing this. None. Zero. It is a creepy, creepy thing to get arrested for. I'll tell you that right now. And, um, it's I don't I don't know exactly whatever happened. I just read the affidavit and and that I believe he was arrested and booked. Um uh, he was arrested. Yeah, not a surprise. He should have been arrested. He was arrested. You you get arrested for that kind of stuff. Now the arrest was in 2006. And that's another, okay, so that's one thing that we're going to, we will hear people, and by the way, it came in a little late on this, because I just kind of wanted to see the reaction, because it's just absolutely, it's absolutely horrendous, um, the fact that there are people that do want to defend Don, and, you know, Don and I have a really close friendship, in case uh, you guys didn't know that, 
And um, but you made it clear that you're not my friend. You made it clear that you're my fucking enemy, right? No, I never said that, and it's true. I never did say that, but I also said that we were never friends, and he knows that, and I know that, and we know that, and it's fine. We just move on from it. Uh, don't hate the guy. Don't care that much. Uh, however, I do believe um, that he, I I've, I firmly believe that him and his wife know what happened to their daughter. I don't know if they personally did it or if they know what happened, but that's just my thoughts. Now I, um, let me see here. Oh my God. Okay. Here we go. All right, guys. So, and, and, while we do this, I would like to welcome in, uh, I would consider him an expert in the, this area. Uh, he is a, uh, a host of a show that some of you may or may not know. He does guest appearances on some shows you may or may not know. Uh, he may or may not have worked a homicide case here or there. We're going to find out. Good to see you, Chris. Thank you for being here, man. Hey, Josh. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? I'm good, Go man. I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, uh, man, so I don't know how much of the show that you've caught, but uh, I literally just got home. So very good. Me. All right. So basically, we have a report from JLR. I've I've double checked it. Uh, Don was arrested for stealing a woman's panties that he was going to uh, pleasure himself into according to the arrest affidavit back in 2006. Um, and he was hiding behind a garage, ducking down. The cop could see him kind of ducking down and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then when they confronted him, he said something about, he was there to get his belongings. Surprise, surprise from a shed. Yeah, sure. Okay. I love it. Yeah. And so it, it, all of this came through uh, law enforcement. Freedom of Information Act. Jonathan Lee Riches uh, sent out a FOIA. He got all the documents back. It's all legit. It's real. It. He was arrested for it. It was a signed affidavit. There were two witnesses, two kids. They were the ones that flagged down the cop. They're like, hey, there's some like creepo over here doing something. We don't know what it is. And um, let me get your reaction. You look un unimaginably unsurprised you know the we used to say the gift that keeps on giving right it um you know every behavior has a purpose so we have to ask ourselves first of all when we look at this type of behavior and the po you know the popo was involved in arkansas and then you start nailing down the um, excuses. Hey, you know, we just found uh, these undergarments here. It just happened to be um, in your possession. What say you? And then, you know, the lie start. Yep. You, you said first, who did he say they were? I believe he said it was his wife's Pam's at the time. And then he said they were his girlfriends. I don't know if Candace was his girlfriend at the time or not. I don't know who... But, but it wasn't either one. It was he was in somebody's house committing a burglary and he took a souvenir that. Well, yeah. And so you have to ask yourself, you know, the, the elements of burglary, right? Anyone who ent enters a dwelling with the intent to commit a theft or a felony. And so the the idea there immediately is if, in fact, you know, though those items were stolen, which, you know, allegedly it sounds like they were mm -hmm. based on what um, uh, you know JLR pulled up yep. on a Freedom of Information Act, yep. then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what's the motivation, number one, of the break-in, A, and then number two, uh, once the items were stolen, what's the purpose of keeping those items? And they all, uh, the second part of that is there is a, uh, a severe underlining, uh, you know, sexual undertone for this for sure. and I, I i've said that from the beginning in relationship to 
you know, everybody was asking why is Mary and why was, you know, every, everybody involved, Jeannie and others, why were they so relevant or not relevant? And obviously now this information is uncovered and you can see exactly why it's relevant because there, it is focused on, you know, women and girls. And that's it. That's, you know, that's the focus of that, of that item that was taken. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, well, you know, what's going on here? And now you, if you roll that over into, and I'm not going to do this, you know, a total comparison because it's not. Uh, however, the type of energy that is built up, we'll call it sexual energy. If you look at just before the four were killed in Idaho, there was an incident a month or two before where the girl's underwear was taken out of her suitcase. I remember that, yeah. And placed into the door, door handle. Yeah. So whoever did that, you have to ask yourself, okay, well, why would that person do that? And we don't know, at least I haven't heard, if any items were actually taken other than that they were moved. Um, so if this happened, what year did this happen? 2006. Oh, wow. So that's a significant amount of time, almost 17 years. Yeah. Well, okay. So there has you he, go. Has he changed? No. A leopard yeah. doesn't lose its spots. Right. And so honestly, it, and you know, and I want to, I want to say this as well. And you and I, th this is so familiar. This is so on par with him and what he does when he's confronted, he, he runs, he hides. And, and that's what criminals do. I get it. That's what people who break the law do. Um, but from the very beginning, you know, he, he accused you and he also accused JLR. Uh, you know, he said that you showed up at his property without him knowing which is, and, and we can let you uh, re re retort that, but, you know. I talked to him on the phone before uh, a couple of times after I had interviewed with Candace. He called me. Uh, he called me one time um, when I was in Nashville, and then he, I tried to get hold of him for almost three days, almost four days, mm. uh, to meet with me, and he, he just didn't want to meet until he found out that I had left the area. And then right. he called me. And that right. was that conversation about Jeannie and Mary and Summer and everybody. Hmm. Right. And and so obviously you wanted him to be there for that interview. He had no interest in it. Um, but, you know, he turns it into this thing like they went up there with my wife or, you know, they my, I wasn't home. My wife was home and she couldn't blah, 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 blah. That's kind of his, that's kind of his MO is, um, but, but let's just be real. Like he didn't want to meet you. Yeah, I would agree with that. He didn't want to meet you. And, and so I, I, and I think a lot of it, and when you had that conversation with him, and by the way, this is what I say and people go, well, you know, he's been honest about it. Well, no, he hasn't because until, until he's confronted with facts, until he's confronted with things that he can no longer push aside and he will try and spin it, but he will eventually admit to something when you brought up, you know, Hey, we're going to talk about some stuff. And then you, you, you also said, tell me a little bit about that. He's like, I'd rather not. And we're like, yeah, well, it's going to come out because if it didn't, by the way, if it didn't come out through you, it was going to come. I think it, I don't even think it did. I think it came out before you. Correct. Which part? Uh, help me understand that one more time. His stepsisters. Yeah. No, I, I had nothing to do with that. In fact, uh, uh, that was uh, Jeannie's daughter right? Who, who brought it to the surface. And I just, you know, when I was talking to Mary, to kind of get some background on the family dynamics, that's when she said, well, I don't know if you heard, but, you know, he had done this to my sister when she was five and I was like, no, I had, I had not heard that. I heard that, you know, um, I think it's Trish, right. I was, so. had gone on, um, uh, another YouTube channel and brought it out 
that, hey, this guy's not as squeaky as everybody thinks he is. And there's there's Mary right now. Good to see her. Yeah, you know. good to see you, Mary. Uh, anyway, so long story short, that's when it came to the surface. And so then I started, you know, thinking, okay, well, there, there's more to this situation here. It's, you know, not my first rodeo. Right. Well, and and that's kind of, I mean, have you ever investigated? I mean, you've been to bunches of break-ins, I'm sure, for, you know, in response. Is it, is there something like, have you seen this before personally? Oh yeah. Hundreds of times. I mean, they, these are, these are like huge red flags to the, to a law enforcement community. Like some of the biggest real, to be honest. Well, because you, you then have to ask yourself, okay, if this, because you, first of all, you have to understand the type of personality behind this. The type of personality behind this is driven by sexual fantasy. All right. And then if there are fetishes such as this, okay, and those fetishes go home with them, well, then that is to fulfill the fan fantasy mentally. And they relive the break in, they relive, you know, having the power and the control over the, the individual who own those items. And right. for them, it's a real big, uh, you know, turn on. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what's going on here? You know, why, why is this, these guys doing this? And that's when in law enforcement, you start looking at, okay, well, for us, we used to look at the, what they call 290s. Okay. And you start looking through the registration and you say, okay, well, who's in the neighborhood or at least who has access in the neighborhood. And you start looking around. Now, if you take, if you take this into consideration, based on what you've just uncovered and what JLR uncovered. If you, if you think about this in the big picture now, all right, who in Don's family is a registered sex offender? His son. I rest my case. That's a great point. That's a great point. I mean, it really is. It, it, and here's the thing too. And I want to, I was going to bring this up as well. Um, is this the one? And maybe it's this one. Okay, so this is from uh, this is from uh, the Seattle Times, I believe, ninety five. I was reading about this. It said one female investigator in the Kirkland Police Department: If a burglary victim can't find anything that's gone, the first thing I ask is, "Did you check your underwear drawer?" As ridiculous as the problem first appears, the sobering truth is that the impulse to steal underwear can be related to a drive far more serious, perhaps. Uh, or uh, perhaps a quarter of all men who engage in such fetishes and nuisance behaviors also are women. Half have um, inappropriately, I will just say, molested girls. Uh, and uh, and that's from a, a, they didn't name the source at the bottom, but that's from a study, a scientific study. They're saying like there's a direct correlation in the people that have been charged with this stuff and that kind of behavior. And then also it says, you know, one thing, one of the things that it in this is from uh, ABC News. One of the things it could indicate is that a person is working their way towards rape or a um, of a real person, said criminal profiler Pat Brown, CEO of the Pat Brown Criminal Profiling Agency. By sneaking into someone's place, they are showing that they can invade their territory. What that person is showing the other person is that he has no problem invading her space correct yeah because what it does is and i think it's important and by the way hello lab rats and everybody in the chat uh, we love you guys thank you uh for saying hi it was very kind of you mm -hmm. um but if we think about you know the big picture here right it, you have to understand that this is this type of fantasy this type of uh you know, territorial control, you know, like, uh, you know, she said there that this is a situation that involves learning. All right. And what I mean by that is every move, if you, if you think about what does it take to go into a house and go through, you know, somebody's personal garment drawer and then steal those items, 
and then know with inside of yourself about what shock and or um, concern the victim will be when she discovers those items missing. Right. Okay. And now if you think about that, that is part of the thrill for these guys. Because just as Pat said there in that statement, and, you know, they have control without even being in the room. Because there's this, you know, apprehension and fear that takes place uh, with inside of the victim. And then you add that now, that learned behavior, mm. and you add that to the fuel, i.e., you know, inappropriate material or pornogra you know, pornographic material on the Internet. And you end up having this driven fantasy. For some, it gets, you know, sketched out like, you know, BTK, Dennis Rader used to sketch it out. I won't be surprised if Koberger didn't have a couple of those things stuck somewhere uh, or at least on his um, computer if, 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 if it's there um, or someplace else. But if he's driven that way, okay, then that is a, that is a building Remember, every behavior has a purpose. So you have to ask yourself, you know, what's the purpose of, of taking her undergarments? What's the purpose? For Don, it sounds like he got a thrill out of it because he went home and, and inappropriately, you know, did some stupid stuff, right? Weird stuff. Things that, you know, the human, the human spirit is capable of a lot of crazy stuff, trust me. But for him, he likes to keep it in a lane. Okay? And, you know, it seems like sheds are a, a theme for him. Loves them. Well, the, yeah, and, the, and, and that's kind of interesting because where was the very first place he checked for summer? Shed. In a shed. When I've asked him, Don, let's talk about the shed, he hangs up on us. <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay? He, hanged up, he hung up on me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and he freaked out on me. Yeah, and and so you have to ask yourself, when I got up to the property and I looked over and I said, can I look in that shed? And what did Candace say? Uh, nah, I really, really shouldn't. It's my husband's stuff. Right, that's where he keeps all, all of his items and all of his tools and all of that stuff, right? Mm, I, don't even, I don't even let the kids in there. Right. And well, why volunteer the children to go into a shed? Right. You know, number one, you know, but that said, you know, the other side of the coin now is what's going on in that shed, if anything. Well, when he used to run away uh, from, you know, his after committing the dastardly deed with Jeannie, uh, he used he used to run and he would try to hide. Uh, and this is, you know, direct from the victim. So he's got this pattern, and that pattern is learned behavior to my where I was going with the point. Okay. Well, this underwear situation is a learned behavior, and it, it you have to ask yourself, why in the world is he obsessed with summer? And what I mean by that. Not obsessed because that's my daughter, but he's obsessed with, you know, remembering how she used to sleep, touching him. Hey, okay, remember they had they he remembered, you know, when she was when she woke up that day, he remembered the, the her touch on her leg from to his leg. Mm. Okay. The fact that and Buddy's going nuts over here if you haven't noticed. Did he just knock a pillow off? Yeah, he just knocked it off. There it goes. It's going to fluff hey, that up. Hey, hey, crazy man, stop. <laughs> we're, we're live. He knows. Anyway, Jack, <laughs> Jack Russell Hour just kicked in. Yeah. Uh, and, and what a good break, though, you know, talking about this stuff. You know, I know. He, he's going crazy over here. Hang on. He's going to rip my leather. Yes, he is. Stop. Stop. Okay. All right. Sorry. 
Um, he was like, don't tell me what to do. Well, we're talking, you know, crazy people, and he's joining in. Um, <laughs> but anyway, sorry about this. Um, okay. I lost my train of thought. Where was I? Uh, I, oh, I you know, I don't know either. In the head, about- learn the yeah. behavior. Yeah, and these things just keep ratcheting it up. So um, I don't know if he's got into meth or what just happened here, but he's not a, not a Don dog. He's not, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but the fan, love, love him. We love him. Yeah, he's great. Hey, bud, can you lay down? Can you go lay down? Show everybody the tricks you don't know. Yeah, go on over and lay down. What do you expect from a Hollywood dog that has his own face on a pillow? You think you that know, he's gonna listen? Look at him. He's a good looker, isn't he? Yeah, he's great. He's fantastic. He's so smart, too. <laughs> he is smart. You know, if I want him to go lay down, he won't lay down. No. no. That's that's exactly how Otis is. He does exactly the opposite of whatever you ask him to do. Hey, he's got his nose in the air. Thinks yeah. he's smelling. <laughs> chasing, chasing rabbits. Anyway, so the other day, uh, just real fast on this thing, there was a jackrabbit right outside my door. Mm. Into the field they go. And uh, for, fortunately, uh, fortunately, the the rabbit, you know, got away and got into the, you know, wherever he hid and I was able to get him. <laughs> anyway, that's good. You. Look so, at him now. Oh, yeah. He's just going to cruise the house. You know, his walk, house. Cruise the house. Mm-hmm. He's a good dog. Anyway, so... This is really disturbing information that came out, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and you were talking about like his obsession and remember the, the morning that he remembers that he left for work uh, with Summer. Yeah, I mean, and but remember, I go back to the Dollar General store. The two visits Candace went, she went in one time. We were parked in the parking lot, waiting to go up to her house. She comes out with a you know couple items in a bag, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm I'm thinking, okay, well, we're going up there now. She turns around and goes back in, and she was in there for like 20 minutes. And I told Karen, I said she's calling Don, and that was just my feeling. I, I you know, he says it wasn't. She didn't call him, but. I don't know. We can never prove that piece of the puzzle. But it was incidental that when I got up there, Don was, you know, MIA. Nowhere. Uh, Yet, you know, the TV was on downstairs and, you know, it looked like somebody was in there or had been in there at some point. You know, so, you know, there you go. Right. And um, so, you know, when he, you know, when he deflects like that and, and, and says, well, you know, you waited till I was going to be gone. I mean, that's, that's nothing but bravado, but the fact of the matter is that, um, these, this lifelong criminal history, uh, of deviant, deviant behavior, violent behavior, um, deceptive behavior, all of it, all of it is important. Would you agree with that? A thousand percent. You, you have to recognize now you have to go by what's real, right? It's not what we think is real. It has to be real stuff. And that means you get real statements from real victims yeah. who turn it into real police who visit him in real jail about the real statements, okay? That kind of things. And so those, in my opinion, those events, you know, took place. He's admitted to it many times, but what he hasn't admitted to is is the totality of it. Now, the courts and and our system is a different situation, right, with statute of limitations and you know, are there loopholes within those statutes 
Um, and so, you know, I can, I can share now that, you know, we had a meeting with the district attorney um, office in Utah uh, with Jeannie. And I'm just going to put it the way it happened. The truth is the DA didn't show up for the meeting. I was furious. And next thing, you know, the next meeting, or when I called Jeannie after that, after we hung up and everything, and she was like, why, why didn't the DA show up? And so her secretary says, well, she had a scheduling problem. We're sorry. You know, she got tied up, yada, yada. And I was like, well, why in the world would you not call the victim and tell them you're not coming because you're tied up in court? Why would you wait here with your secretary on the phone and we're all waiting for you and you don't show up? Well, anyway, she didn't like me that moment, but quite frankly, I didn't care. Hey, I've been in this game, you know, since 1982. You know, life goes on. But Jeannie was devastated. You can imagine how much courage it took her to go this far and then have the DA not show up. And, you know, have done behind the scenes working and working, trying to get the family to get her to stop. So that's when the other girl came forward and they, she went down and actually met with the DA. And so you know, behind the scenes right now, Jeannie needs a mental break uh, from the trauma that she's, she has experienced from the ages of five to the ages of 12 by this guy. Okay. Uh, I don't care what he says in my, you know, I, he can say whatever he wants about me. I don't care. I know what he did to Jeannie and I know what he did to Mary and I know what he did to these other women. Okay. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And if we look at this 2006 incident now that you're bringing up, okay, a leopard does not lose its spots. And, and Pat Brown's a hundred percent correct that, these guys build the fantasy base uh, around the sexual arousal into a violent sexual assault. So this this is definitely a signal of es 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 he's escalating. Yep, and, and that, that's right here. Trev, shout out to Trev time. Chris, do you believe this behavior might uh, signal escalation? I find it hugely disturbing, but maybe I'm reaching. Appreciate you both as always. I, Go ahead, Chris. No, that's a great comment, uh, Trev. And and the sad the sad commentary to that though, he's already escalated. He's past it. It's done. Okay. He's past feeling. Mm -hmm. He he is so manipulative and he's so skilled at, you know, trying to turn and twist and all this other stuff. Um, you know, let let's just take a guess here. So now that this information is out. And it's focused on him through the police, so it's real information. Let's just pretend that he is going to come up with a line of, um, you know, boo-hoo. Where do you think he's going to go? What's your best guess, everybody? And, and Josh, what do you think? I mean, he's going to go to a soft landing spot. But, what, like, to talk about it? Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. At some point, he will weave in. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you perfect? But, right. Are, yeah, that's always a common line. But then he'll be like, well, but that was a long time ago. Kelly says a shed. And it, yeah, I, yes. He says that every time. But I think that a long time ago is not the current day for him. Meaning if it happened last week, that's in the past brother. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> yeah. But, but the challenge is here, uh, in everybody's life, how many have two family members evaporate? Yeah. Well, that's crazy. Show, show of hands. Yeah, show of hands. I mean, in terms of how many people in, uh, now I'm not talking about people that have passed away. I'm talking about people that have vanished. A five-year-old and, you know, his sister-in-law. They just vanished. 
just how just what is the what are the odds? Uh, I'd like to find a Vegas bookie and figure those odds out. I mean, I couldn't imagine them being. Uh, I mean, the the odds are just astronomical. Yeah, two two human beings. One being five years old, and by the way, she's still five. She's not had her birthdays yet, outside right. of her not being here to right. celebrate them. So in the Amber Alert, she's five. She's not seven. And she will always be five until somebody knows. Okay? And somebody says something. But if you just if you just think about those those odds for a second, and then you say Okay, well, one of those individuals back in the day, not long ago, 17 years ago, uh, was caught stealing and breaking into houses and stealing women's underwear. Yeah. But then that same person, you know, 40 years before that, happened to be, you know, accused by his family of molesting them from the ages of 5 to 12. Right. So did it? Did it decrease or increase or stay the same? I think that kind of stuff uh, increases. I don't think it decreases. Correct. It always increases. Of course. Okay. It's a and very it's a very strong urge, and when you kind of when you give into it, uh, it's much easier to do it the next time. Well, you they learn. It's a learned behavior. Correct. And then they master the ability to mask it in the secret life. This was, and obviously I have no proof of this, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this isn't the first time that he's stolen some panties. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to go on a limb and say, no, this is the first time he got caught. <laughs> it, maybe it is. We don't know. That's the thing. There's more sealed, di uh, sealed documents from uh, Utah and I don't think that's everything. I think that there's more. I, I, oh. I just, I don't know. It just hasn't came out yet. It's all it is. Right. Uh, and this is just the first time that we have heard of, i.e. through, you know, the information that he got busted and right. it's out in the open. Right. And but if I was to say, hey, Chris, you know, you, you know, the guy, uh, Don Wells, his, his daughter's been missing for two years and. You know, we've been running some background on your lead investigator, and I come up to you with this, and I say, hey. And and I even said this to you just the other day. I said, you're going to want to hear this. Yeah, I, you remember that text? Yeah, you were, I was busy. I couldn't even call you back. I mean, And I, I understand, but, but I knew that you were on the phone or whatever. I knew you were working, and you didn't answer. And then I and very rarely do I do this, but I follow up with, you're going to want to hear this. And... You weren't shocked, but um, you found it interesting. If I was to bring something like that to you in a missing child case, um, knowing everything that we knew about it, it, I mean, does that just really reinforce the the thoughts that you know we have we've had? I mean, um, I don't. I just don't. You know. I'm not going to go out on a limb and accuse Don of stuff that I can't prove, but this behavior is, is disturbing and it it's even more disturbing knowing that his little five-year-old girl that he unfortunately has admitted that he showered with, um, which I find, you know, I, that's too much to me. That's just too much. I don't have a daughter, but like I, it's too much. It's too far. You know, everything is, that's just, to me, that's just bad. You know, I'm not even going to touch that because I, I don't have to. Right. The, fa the fact that if, if people can't, if, well, I, I got to be careful. Yep. You, if you can't see that the horse is at the, the water hole and drinking, Okay, then you have the blinders on, not the horse. Okay. The, if, if he, I would love for Don to call up and say, hey, by the way, I need to talk to you about the women's underwear incident. 
Okay, great. What 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 say you? Let, I'm just gonna. We'll just put it out there. Don, when you get a chance, call Josh, uh, and you know, give him a reason why the cops busted you uh, with the ladies' undergarment. Okay. Uh, in fact, tell all your friends on YouTube, everybody that hates me, which are which I'm good to go. Okay, tell them all about why you were caught by the police, the popo, with ladies' undergarments. Give them a call. In his pocket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could have been on his head. You know, it wouldn't have made a difference. Right. right? But the, the, the funny, well, the, I didn't say the funny. It's really not funny. But the thing is, it's in his pocket. And the officer was like, kind of, you know, I get, uh, according to the, the arrest record, the, the officer was like, what are you doing? Like, he was like, he was trying to, to, to hide him, obviously. And then when he was found out about him, that's when he started, well, they're my wife's wife's underwear. They're, it's like, no, they're not. Okay. Well then they're my girlfriend's. Can you imagine saying that to a cop? They're my wife's underwear, your wife's underwear are in your pocket. You're standing in front of this house that you have no business being in front. Yes. Oh, sorry. They're not my wife's. They're my girlfriend's. You have a girlfriend. You're married. All right. Um, did you take anything from inside this house? Nope. Just the panties. All right. And what's your reason for being here? The shed. Hmm, the shed. Okay. There you go. Uh, and then you hook them and book them. You, st you stole women's panties out of her house. Out of her, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And Chris, there are people out there that will defend him and have already Good. defended so, him. It's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's unbelievable to me. Well, I mean, that's, that's like, you know, patting them down and, you know, because police have the ability under reasonable suspicion, if somebody keeps putting their hands in their pockets or something to that effect for officer safety, you can pat that person down. Okay, under Terry versus Ohio, right, and and Map versus Ohio. Those are two, you know, um, it's called the Terry stop and a Map versus Ohio. And so you can pat them down for your safety to make sure they don't have any weapons. And then when he's patting him down, I could see this moment going like this, you know, going and pulling them out and saying, "Hey, dude, you know, what's up with these?" I'm sure that's oh, probably oh, how it happened. Oh, Oh, did you put those in my pocket, officer? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, I've I've got a backpack of them right here in my squad car. Hang on, I got to get you a couple more pair. Okay, right. You know, right. And, yeah. you know, if we if we have gone that far as a society, okay, if people if people think that's even a reality, yeah, then you know what? Good luck. Good luck with that in front of a jury. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it won't it won't play out well. That's that's for sure. Um, and like I said, this is a, this incident isn't just me going. Oh my God, Don had a parking ticket, you know, in in ninety six that he didn't pay off. That has everything to do with this case. If you as a human being can can look at Don. And everything that has gone on, and Candace as well, because by the way, Candace is no saint. Lady pulled a shotgun on a CPS worker. You know, if I did that, I'd probably be in jail for twenty years. I'm just saying. I, I don't. I'm not really sure how that works. But anyway, and I've never even been arrested before. But the thing is, I don't. I don't know how you can just turn your back on the facts. And a lot of people do that and they say, well, this has nothing to do with this. And this has, by the way, most of the people that say this are not qualified. Chris, you're, you are somewhat of an expert in these situations and in, in these kinds of, or especially even in this case, when it comes to ch child crimes, correct? I'm an expert in child criminal behavior analysis. Yes. Correct. All right. And, and so you, you, You've seen these guys. I've interviewed thousands of them, hundreds of them, hundreds. I mean, I, you, I, I've, if you want to see some of these guys, just go look at, you know, the interview. I, I, I've only put one interview up, and that's with uh, Wesley Allen Dodd in uh, Walla Walla State Prison on death row. If you want to see what these guys, not Don, Don doesn't come to this yet, but he's on his way. 
Okay? But if you look at the way Dodd operated, he, he was responsible for four children. And the big question was, did he do more? Well, I went in, I was, and I interviewed him. And that's, I put it on my YouTube channel. You can go watch him. Yeah, I remember. I, absolutely fascinating stuff. Um, Lisa's here, and thank you, Lisa, for your donation. Chris, do you think Summer's case will be solved? Thank you both. I think Summer's case will be solved. And I do believe that, you know, the, the witnesses in this will be the family members. I believe that at some point these children will, you know, come forward and say what really happened that day. And this is one of the reasons the state of Tennessee, and just is just my opinion, has come in and said, hey, by the way, you have just given up all of your rights, custodial and parental rights. You are no longer the parents. The state of Tennessee is the parents. Okay, and we're going to take these children and we're going to put them in a house, in a home, somewhere through foster care, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to try to give them a life. We're going to balance them out, hopefully, through counseling and a lot of it and a lot of great support and see how the children fare in the long run. But you, i.e. mom and dad, uh, you have a no contact order. You are not allowed to talk to your children. Well, why is that? Uh, because you've probably screwed them up already. Okay? And the state has stepped in to say, it's over. No more. No, you know, comprende. Okay? Move along. Nothing to see here. Keep moving. Mm. And, you know, we'll see what happens. If, you know, CPS got involved for a reason. And like you said, you pull shotguns on CPS. Who's to say they didn't pull a shotgun on the children? Of course. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I've seen crazier things. Okay. But those children need a stable environment. And how many kids total were taken away from that family over time, Josh? I forget the number. Uh, I believe it's eight total and, and Summer is missing. Right. So so nine. But, but eight were taken by the state to, yeah. between Don and Candace, both. Yeah. And so this... This is the, if we just step back and do the common sense piece of this puzzle, it's not rocket science. It's not. No, it's if, not. if I saw that the state came in and said, here are all your children, then we would say, you know what, Don, I owe you an apology. I, I, I was way off about this one. But guess what? It's been two years. And that hasn't happened yet. In fact, I was there about a week after the kids were taken during that interview with Candace. And I even empathized with her and I told her, I said, this is a rough day for you. I know it is. And you can go watch the video. And she goes, I know. And I said, okay, you know, look, I'm here to help. I want to help you find Summer and I want to help you make sense of this situation. If you say she vanished, okay, show me. Help me understand it so I can understand the perpetrator and or at least, you know, get an idea of what the weak points are and what the strengths are for an investigative process of this. And you were asked by the head of the Cold Case Foundation, Coop, because you were in the area. Can you swing by, see what's going on here? You know, we've, we've heard about this. See if they need if they need some help. And if not, all right. Right. Because uh, I was with Brian McKenzie and Francis, his mother. Right. When we were, when she was looking for him, and I told her, I said, "Look, you know, tell me everything," and she did. And I said, "Okay, here's here's some of the key. We need to look for the car. It's easier to find the car than it is his body. Let's find the car." And lo and behold, they found the car, and Brian was in the car. Okay, and you know, that individual now who did that is up for murder charges. Chris, let me ask you this. In all your years, and, and I'm sure that there are people in the chat that have worked uh, CPS as well. Sure. Have you ever seen a family go from a no contact order to getting their children back? I mean, anything is possible, but it's rare. Right. Okay. Because 
the the whole reason the judge the judge you know weighs on you know psychological counseling you know uh, you know victim advocates you know CPS advocates this this is a very specialized area when you're dealing with children and potentially children of trauma because if we if we talk about you know just the day summer disappeared okay those children were traumatized oh. just, just on the fact that some, her their sister disappeared i mean they they're honestly and and i know that people don't forget about them when it comes to the case but they they really are kind of they play second fiddle when it comes to victims in this and they are ter they've been terribly victimized i'm not right. saying that i'm not i'm just saying be, you know they're they're because they're in a better place with uh, people, uh, you know, they're taken care of. But that doesn't change the fact of all the crap that they went through to, up until the day that. And by the way, Don claims, and once again, another lie of Don. He says that if he would have known the law, he would not have gave his children up to CPS. He would have told them to get off the property. Fact of the matter is, he had 24 hours to turn those children over to CPS, or he was him and him and Candace were hooked and booked, and then they take the kids. Well, you know, CPS has a, a, a my heart goes out to those people and social workers, and nurses and doctors. You know, they, that's a very very specialized group of people. Yeah, you know, they're forensically trained through cognitive interviewing, forensic cognitive interviewing. Um, you know, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that is unraveled, right? I mean, they use, they use, you know, like bears and puppets and stuff like that during some of these forensic interviews where, you know, I, I would sit in the other rooms, you know, for, you know, during trauma interviews and homicide cases and the children that may have witnessed it. And, you know, they'd give them a, you know, an object, you know, probably a bear or a toy or something to that effect. And they go through and they, you know, really don't push the child. The child has to cognitively, well, you know, you were young. You went through this when you witnessed your mother being killed. Okay. So I'm, who am I to say, right? I'm speaking to the, to the guy that actually lived it. I'm the guy that actually watched it. The okay. one that handed me teddy bear. Well, there you go. So, the, these are the skill sets that is a really, as Vet Girl says here, this is a very difficult job when you have these children. Because just not, not the oldest one, think of the youngest one. Okay? Because what is this youngest one thinking now that his sister has disappeared? What, what potentially could be in that child's mind? Am I next? Was it me? You know, could it have been me? You know, and we could go on and speculate all day long, but the they struggle to get into the mind of these small children okay and once they do once they crack that code then the children all start to you know get into a comfort zone and you know for all we know the last whatever it's been 18 19 24 months now that it's like a safe they may be spinning you know two to the right one to the left and they were just waiting to get two to the right again. And then crack, it's open. And you know where we see this? Elizabeth Smart. Remember her sister? Her sister for, I think, like, what was it, six, eight months? Could not remember who that person was. And then one day, the safe spun the handle was hit and the door opened and she goes, it was the maintenance worker. Yeah. Repressed that, memory. That's who it was. Right. right. Well, that's what's probably taking place around these children and why CPS has stepped in potentially. And why CPS also said, at least the court said for the state of Tennessee, don't talk to them. You have a no contact order. Do not talk to them. And then you hear Don out here go, you know, they won't let me talk to my child. Well, no kidding, Sherlock. Okay. There's a lot. Yeah, we we had a no contact order as well. Like, if, you know, from our, from our father, no phone calls to the house. I mean, he's a, no phone calls, no letters, no nothing. 
No, in, not even indirect. Uh, that meaning you can't send it to a family member and then have them pass it on. Like it's just you get you get in a lot of trouble for that. I mean, they they take that stuff extremely serious. Extremely serious, yeah, because because this is not you know. This is not pretend time out here. This is real time for for that sweet little five year old, and you know until she is found, these authorities will not give up. No, I can they won't. Sure about that. I think they're I think that they're working as hard as ever. Um, and I thought it was encouraging when you know Lawson says that he will give an update on this case in the near future. I, what do you expect that kind of an update? I know that I, I hate asking you to speculate, but it's kind of part of what we do. I'll tell you what I think. I think that uh, it's either person of interest, suspects, or an arrest. I think that that will be the update. I don't think it's going to be some willy nilly update. I think that I think that it's going to have some some meat on the bone personally. Well, I think the next press conference will be valuable. Yeah, we say that whatever it is. And and you're right. I don't want to speculate because I don't know. Uh, I can only speak from, you know, my own experience. When you when you go before the press, uh, you better better know what you're saying and why you're saying it, because you're telling the nation, if not the world with this case, what the latest results are and or progress in the investigation. Chris, I've never seen a grassroots uh, crime case like this spread the way that it has. I mean, it it has. We're talking England. We're talking. I get. I've gotten emails from people from Singapore. I've gotten people from South Africa that pay attention. They watch everything about this case, and um, I don't. I truly have always felt that Don and Candace did not expect this to happen like this. They they just didn't. Yeah. Well, and I I agree with you. I think, you know, I think some of their emotional response is normal, and it, to be expected because you know they are parents. But at the same time, if you you have to look at the intent of that behavior again. You know, and, you know, there's so many, so many things out there about, you know, well, they've got her hidden or, you know, the church or, you know, they've got her hidden. And, you know, here, here's the rule number one on that one. Hey, pastor. Yeah. You have this, you have this five-year-old hidden somewhere under your church umbrella policy of kidnap kids. Uh, um, mm, is that a yes or a no? Um, mm, uh, it's a no. Okay, right. great. If we find this child and you had anything to do with it, everybody's going to jail. Have a great day. The church is closed. You know, see you next year. Right. So all of this hoo-ha like that, you've got to be kidding me. This is a five-year-old who has an active Amber Alert in the country, in the United States of America. So are you talking, are you talking about the, the hero... Uh, theory that's been around for a while. Yeah, the hero theory. One that of the guy, dumbest things. It's so stupid. That guy's going to go to prison. Whoever that hero is. Yeah, if, it, it, yeah it doesn't they exist. It's they don't hoo-ha. exist. All right. Yeah. So the the facts of of this case are simple. Don't leave the house. It's either an accident, a cover up, or an intentional act in relationship to somebody knows what happened on that property because this is not a stranger abduction i you know because the stranger abductor and a you know the abductee mm -hmm. i mean summer okay the universe would have to be on schedule 300 percent right. and you know the narratives kind of changed recently they've they've got her outside now potentially playing right have you noticed that yeah, I have. And, I, and and Don also told me that it's possible that she did maybe walk away. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So for two and years. It, but then, Chris, but then the next day he'll go, there's no way she walked away. <laughs> right. You know, look, we, we give them, 
you know, you give them so much and, you know, then enough people come around them and they recreate the narrative. Great. That's fine. I haven't changed my narrative. My narrative is still the same. Mm -hmm. I have not left the house. The, the child went into the basement, according to the parents, and the basement somehow created a, you know, a Star Trek vacuum that sucked her up into space and she's gone. Okay? We're just waiting for her to reappear. Of course, that's foolish. That's not true. Right. She, something happened. Right. And that child, and that child, you know, has vanished. Uh, Trev asks, Chris, can you explain what possible circumstantial evidence could exist in a case like this? Uh, and that's a that is a really great question, Trev. And um, I'm sure that Chris is more than apt to uh, answer that. But I I'll just tell you right off the bat: uh, behavior, uh, prior and after, statements inconsistencies go ahead chris yeah every one of those is what would be considered an overt act act okay they intentionally right. you know a couple of things would have to be proven you know if malice of forethought what they call mens rea which is an evil mind i.e they intended to purposely deceive law enforcement authorities because they had done something wrong and anybody attached to that wagon could be arrested you know for accessory after the fact whatever the statutes are in uh, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But th this is a real, it's, it's, it's not a complicated problem. I agree. It, it's complicated because there, the social media has played such a significant role by pulling out conversations with the parents. And all of a sudden, you know, the direction of where things go keep changing. And so the truth is a constant. And, you know, that's one thing. So you can bet uh, at some point, you know, and, and I may even get subpoenaed. I don't know. And quite frankly, I'm in. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah me okay. too. That, you know, this is what I heard. This is what I saw. And they'll press play. And they'll play it in court. Okay. I, I'm, I'm all about that. That's, that's not a problem. Okay. As you know what I do. That's what so, you do. That's a, it's a, it's a no brainer. Right. And, and at that point, then they're going to look for the inconsistencies. Well, what exactly did he say? What exactly did she say? Where exactly was she? You know, what exactly was she doing that day? Yada, yada. And you go down that road. So all of that behavior becomes circumstantial in nature. And then what you try to look for is the unevidence of an abduction. Mm. Okay. What evidence isn't there? that's showing there's an abduction. Eyewitness testimony, number one. What do you have? You have one witness who hears a scream. Okay? But you saw the authorities early on say, well, we vetted that. Okay? It's a nothing burger right now. To them? To, yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. According to the sheriff yeah. and, and everybody, right? So now you start unwinding those things. All the people that were accused... Remember, I I was a suspect. Yeah, me too. Okay, I, I think the sheriff knows by now, just by watching YouTube, I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't even around. Yeah, okay. me neither. I've never even been to Tennessee. So you start pulling those, you know, feathers off the chicken, and eventually you realize, holy cow, this is a, this chicken has no feathers. Okay. And then you, you walk in and you say to the rooster, hey, what's up? They haven't left the house. I'll guarantee it. I agree because if, and like I said, it's all there. If you, if you look at it, meaning they said, Hey, if there's an abduction, if that's something that's, you know, if we can get a lead, if we can get a suspect, we will bring that to you immediately. If there's a vehicle, if there's anything that develops from that, but we just don't have that. And that was a year after summer went missing that just that's never happened there's not posters going like there's not sketches of you know bridge guy and and you know whatever there's just none of that and then you you look at the parents and you go look man to me the writing's on the wall now is it going to take some time 
it's it obviously has but i don't think and and you could speak to this more than anybody i don't think that that is abnormal in cases like this and when they say oh summer's case is outside the norm i believe what they're talking about is because of the other children that are involved this is a delicately slow process because you know i mean look man they took my they took my sister who was 5 years old at the time into a room and they weren't very good at this stuff back then <laughs> there just wasn't a lot of training for it but they they just flat out asked her you know did your dad ever touch you inappropriately stuff like that and um there wasn't a lot of prep time there wasn't a lot of you know, I mean, they they tried their best. It, there just wasn't it just wasn't the way it is now. You know, with the the, the extreme specialists that the the kids units and all that kind of stuff. Like that stuff happened as we got older, and you know, there was the the counseling got better and better and better. Um, but like I said, they they do it in such a way now that they really do put the ch obviously, and they should. But they, they were looking in the middle of the woods, Chris, on a second on a sec, second or third search. They're looking in the woods months and months and months after Summer went missing. Do you what do you think that they're looking for out there? And I'll tell you exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for a body of a child, Summer Wells. That's what they think. And, the, and all you have to know is that that's where they went looking. They're, they are not looking for an alive child. I'm sorry to, to say that. And, and is it possible that she's alive? Of course it's possible. It's just not likely. It's not likely. The percentage, I mean, it's just, you don't, I don't even have to talk about percentage. Just look in your heart. You know, if they could tell us where Summer was and if she was alive, they would have done it by now. They can't because they'll go to jail. Whoever did this. And Don and Candace got, had their children taken after a child of theirs went missing. And then they're not allowed to talk to those children anymore. Cut off. At first it was like, okay, well, you know, you can't take everything from them. But now they are completely isolated. Law enforcement doesn't meet with them. They're not invited down to have coffee on Fridays to talk about the case. Uh, they're not standing at podiums that none of that stuff is going on. So what exactly is going on behind the scenes? If, if, if we're not putting out suspect alerts, if we're not working on sketches of people, law enforcement's doing none of that, Chris, other people are law enforcement's not. What say you about that? Well, I think at this point they're unpacking and repacking the information that they they have, you know, with the digital footprints, that type of stuff. Um, the lack of evidence, if any, or if they do have evidence, they're processing. Maybe they're waiting for, you know, some lab results. But by this point, they're, those lab results are back. They're also, you know, maybe waiting for that vault to be opened, i.e. the children, the three boys. Right. And to see what they say or have said or haven't said. Right. And then they're going to try to correlate that information into an investigative process. Does it point to something or someone, i.e. anybody that came up on that property? But the, the one thing I think is a difficult task here is the investigators have not been able to, you know, eliminate anybody and you know that is a clue because if you'll notice even with uh, we will use Michael Vaughn for an example Chief Huff came out and said in all the press conferences Brandy was standing right there next to them and said the family is not involved let's move on next Okay. Well, lo and behold, later on, you see a press conference with four total strangers. Right. Right? Right. Okay. Well, we haven't seen that press conference yet. 
No, and I, you know, I had that conversation privately with Don uh, after he uh, cussed me out and told me he was going to hunt me down and find me and all that kind of stuff. It was like, cool. But um, I did say, I said, why, why is law enforcement, if, if you're innocent, if you guys are innocent, why is law enforcement hang, leaving you hang out to dry? I mean, that would be highly irresponsible of them to not come out and protect you as as you like to call it, and I said this, and it kind of pissed them off. I said, Amber, an Amber Alert family, which I've never heard of in my life. Uh, Tim Mullins made that up. Uh, how, how come they're not coming out and, and you know, putting their support behind you? And he, his answer was, that's a great question. Yeah, man. And it gets greater by the day. <laughs> you know, time is time is the investigator's friend. It is not the enemy. Right. Okay. It's the enemy to the suspect. Uh, initially, it's the friend of the enemy. When the incidents go down, time is of the essence to get in and out and get around. Right. But as time goes on, that shifts to the investigation process. And if you're, if you're patient and you pace yourself, then that information starts to present itself because, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. I, I talked to an ex, ex-husband the other day on a caper. And man, was it just a flood of information. You know, and then, you know, because, you know, I'm working a double out of Texas Mm. with the Cold Case Foundation. Right. And so, you know, we started talking and we chatted it up. And next thing you know, you know, I got A, B, C, D and E, uh, you know, and then it jumped to H, I, J, K, L, M, N, you Mm. know, and it just kept on going. And I was like, man, this guy was really mad over time. And then so now you take that information and you can, you know, source that back to the to the agency and then they can source through it and verify it and, you know, validate it. And so these are the kind of things that they're not anticipating when this thing, whatever, whatever happens at some point, if it's, if it is a guy associated to the property and they knew this and that, whatever, whatever the dynamics are going to be, it is going to be related to somebody that knows that property and somebody that knows the dynamics of that property. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm positive of that. Every news reporter, every person that's been there, even even the people that are, I would say, somewhat pro Donner Candace, uh, you know, Angela from WJHL says, look, you got to know where you're going to get here. You have to have a purpose for coming here. It, 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 it wouldn't be your first time. Like you're just going, Oh, look, let's go up on top of that Hill and see if there's a kid in the basement or however the hell they tried to frame it. I mean, I don't think people realize how isolated that house really is. And we're already talking about a rural area, but then we're even talking like that, that it's not, that house isn't sitting on the bottom of the road. That was just not. Remember when I went out to Coburger and Idaho and I walked around that house and then we walked around the streets and I went out on the limb and I said, a hundred percent, the suspect knows this neighborhood. He's, he's here somewhere. He's familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, he's in the next town over. Lo and behold, he comes into that arena 12 separate times. Okay. They got him pinged left and right. That's what I'm saying about summer Wells. The suspect knows that house. Whoever that is, or whatever that is, that takes it out of the stranger category. Right. Because with the stranger category, then you can say, you know, well, it could be anybody. Okay. Well, yeah, but statistically, the way this thing happened, i.e. from mom, when I asked her, Candace, where did you last see her? She went went inside, talked to her brothers, Mm -hmm. and I told her brothers, Keep an eye on her. Okay. And I went back to my mom. And then I went back and I said, where's Summer? Oh, she's in the basement, mom. She went down to play in the basement. Now, you have to take a total stranger out of the universe and somehow give him x-ray vision eyes 
that he can see into that house that five-year-old Summer Wells is in that house with her mother just outside in the same environment. And take a chance. Okay, this is my opportunity. I know mom's up on top of the hill. At least I think she is. Or maybe she is. Perhaps she is. I'm not really sure. But somehow I'm going to get into this room and I'm going to take that five-year-old without the other three brothers, the mother or the grandmother, hearing her scream, shout, when she's been described as she rules the roost with all the boys. Oh, yeah, Summer was in charge. She's a tomboy. Look at all the videos. That goes in the face of the personality of the victim. And that's why victimology is so important. So Summer is in this basement according to the story. Now we have to say we have some person who is an absolute mud hen, does not know, okay, how he's going to get the kid out of the house and vanish down that dog trail mm -hmm. and somehow have a car sitting out there or something to that effect that nobody sees, okay? Nobody sees it, <laughs> okay? Right, right, right. And, and control her and throw her in the car with a single scream and drive away and she's gone forever. Okay. If you believe that, you're, you're entitled to believe it. There's no question about that. You know, you're entitled to it. And I respect you for that, but, uh, you know, really think a little bit harder. Put yourself in the shoes of Summer Wells. You have to think like the victim. Put yourself in the shoes of Summer Wells. And then, I don't know how much she weighed, but she figure out... Like 30 pounds. Okay, so you got a 30-pound bag of concrete that you have to control. Yeah, that's... that's well, this... this she moves, you know. But that's the point. Right. You have to control a 30-pound human body. Tough. That either over the mouth or, you know, what are you just holding her? Okay, well, you're doing that. You're not covering the mouth. If you're doing that, you're not handling the arms and the legs. So how do you hold her? How do you run with her? No, the majority of these guys reach out, grab them, and they pull them into cars, woods, or something to that effect. Correct. Okay. So Correct. it just keeps, it just, it doesn't fit because that's the risk to the suspect. Nobody's thinking about that side of it. I've been thinking about it, as you know, from day one. What's right. the risk to the suspect? And I've said this. And the card team came to the same conclusion. It's obvious. I mean, that's, that's how I feel about it, too. I've always kind of felt that way. Uh, Stephanie K says, what do you think? Chris, what do you think will break this case? The truth. Beautiful. I agree. And 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 I specifically think that it's the boys. I think that the boys are the, the key. I think that I would imagine that Grandis has much more information than she's really let on as well. But I think that the boys are what uh just like in the just like in the, the West Boys case. Um, all those kids told, told a similar, basically the same story. Um, and guess what? That took two years as well. Um, let me check here. Kathy says, Chris, why did Candace get emotional by the water? And, and because she wanted to absolutely tell the truth. Did. Because she wanted to tell the truth. And she was breaking down on you. We were that close. We were that close. And, and she just basically, what did she just sit down? Yeah, well, what happened was she turned around and there were some search people there and she looked at me like, you know, mistrust. And she said, did you know they were going to be here or something to that effect and vice versa? I said, did you know? No. I said, I had no idea. I don't even know who they are. Right. And that was it. She, she you know, tightened back up and she was no longer going to, completely you know lay it out but she was sincere i i will i will not deny that she was sincere in her emotional response and she did look at me and say 
you know, I, f I think that God's coming down on me. And I said to her, I said, Candace, why would you feel that way? Help me understand. And, and I meant it in all sincerity. And she started to break down. And because I think the weight of the totality of the circumstances was weighing upon her. And she wanted to say something more. And I, I believe that, you know, the other individuals, you know, who are uh, on the Dr. Phil show where they said, you know, hey, there's something more here. We can't, we can't pin it down yet, but there's something more here. Well, I said that a month before they did. <laughs> right. You know, and right. so right. it's kind of like, you know, I was right there with her. And I believe that Candace wants to tell the truth. I really do. I, I, I think even though, you know, we can villainize everybody, and that's really not, it's, it does no good in totality. Don villainized himself because, you know, of what he's done and how he's done it, et cetera. And so, and, and, but Candace in this place, i.e. with Summer, okay, she knows more. There's something inside of her that wants to say, but I think the reason they're together is because Don has a big thumb on the totality of that truth. Yeah, I think so too. I I, I think that's how it's been. And um, but you know what? This to me, this this report just really solidifies the feelings that a lot of us have had throughout this entire process. Um now people could people could just say they could say anything they could say look it's it's immaterial it doesn't matter well that's how you know we're just going to agree to disagree on that because i fully believe with all my heart that it matters and um i always have and i, I just don't think uh i just don't think that there's any defending especially this latest report by jlr of dawn uh, stealing underwear from a, a, a lady. I don't know how you defend that. You just, I just, I, I don't. I mean, I don't think that there's any explanation that you could give that would justify doing something like that, other than uh, being sexually charged and aggressive towards people that aren't reciprocating those feelings. Ba basically, just creeping around. You know, when my sweetheart goes to buy undergarments, I, I get weird. I get weird. And I'm like, I'll, I'll meet you out here in the lobby. Right, right. Of okay. And so right. now you you take that and then you overlay that into, oh, by the way, I broke into your house and I stole your underwear. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't imagine anybody wanting to steal my underwear, but. Well, yeah, I can't either. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know and trust right. me, I've studied a lot of them. You yeah. Know, right. If I find one, I'll send them your way, though. But Thanks. that's good. But those are the kind of things, you know, they're, they may sound minutia. They may sound, you know, for a woman, that's traumatic. That's extremely traumatic. Right. And, and so those are the kind of things you have to say to yourself. Well, wait a minute. I'm out here, you know, fighting for this guy. And he's got this, you know, double life uh, and all of a sudden you know it's starting to you know come to the surface even further but we heard it with Jeannie and, and Mary and and others Rhonda a total stranger by the way okay <laughs> you know who slept over and stayed stayed the night or and then there's distant cousins all this other stuff okay it, okay if you don't believe Jeannie or you don't believe Mary what about Rhonda do you believe her? Okay. And and here's the commonality among the, the three, and there were a total of five. Among the five, one guy. Yeah. One, five women, one guy. Right. Flip a coin. Right, yeah. It's, the common denominator is, is there. Somebody made a great point. Otis has, in fact, stole my underwear before, but he wasn't an intruder. There was an inside job the whole time. Wasn't hard to fight, figure out who it was. We caught the perp. We arrested him. He had some dog food. He took a nap. But we're talking about somebody sneaking into somebody's house. How violating. I mean, and by the way, this isn't some rare phenomenon either. I mean, it's something that happens quite often. 
And uh, it's all kind of the, it kind of all falls in the same. And, and once again, uh, let's say, you know, one of the things that in the, uh, it could indicate is that the person is working their way towards rape or rape of a real person. Um, and said criminal profiler, Pat Brown, CEO of the Pat Brown criminal profiling agency by sneaking into somebody's place. They're showing that they can invade their territory what that person is showing the other person is that he has no problem invading their space. That's a major problem. And it's something that falls right in line. And, and this is a really good comment. Can you put uh, Sartre up here for a minute? Sure. This is a good comment. Can you see that one? But that shows yeah. ESAs. Maybe. I don't know. Where, where was it at? What's and the name? Chat. Uh, Sartes, I think. S-A-R-T-E-S. Sartes. Um, Hang on. We're going to get your comment. Looking, looking. Okay. Sartes. This one? Yeah. Okay. So this is a great comment. Okay. But that shows he essays. But how does that mean he did something to Summer? Where is the leap made? Is it connected and honest? Okay. At the lab. All right. Well, first of all, remember, every behavior has a purpose. That's always the one thing I always like to remind everybody. Every behavior has a purpose. Okay. And so these individuals have been studied for years and years and years. Okay. And they're, most of the time they're studied in the prisons through, you know, therapy. Like, and there's a hospital in, in California called the Tascadero. Okay. And in a Tascadero, they do these group settings. And there they get the victim, okay, i.e., the suspect, to think like the victim. They 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 put these guys through group therapy to have them think like the victim because they want to change their paradigm and have a paradigm shift. Okay. So what what happens is they start discovering that these behaviors are uh, like Legos, like Lego blocks. And it starts off at a very young age. Typically, uh, if, a, if a suspect's been you know, molested by you know, a family member, you know, a neighbor or something to that effect, most of those behaviors immediately start to screw up with the child's brains. And then they, they start accepting that this is the way they are. And so they start to dive into uh, various types of uh, materials, such as, you know, the, the P word, right? Okay. And then in that fantasy land, what they believe to be real relationships are also very damaged relationships because they have not learned through a proper role modeling of sort what a normal relationship looks like. So they go to the pornography to validate what or what not a normal relationship looks like. Okay. Ted Bundy was you know, first asked about this years ago uh, just before he died, uh, before he was executed, he gave a he gave an amazing interview with Dr. Dobson, James Dobson, who, by the way, was not a minister; he was an actual psychiatrist. Okay? And in that, he related that how he got caught up in at first looking at the old detective magazines. Uh, back in the day, that was where the the material was. Okay, they didn't have the internet. Um, and so, remember when you were a kid, you, you, where would you find all the dirty stuff? It would be either A, in the back of a store somewhere, because that's where the, the city had zoned it, okay? or it was underneath the counter. And, you know, you couldn't see it, but you could ask for it. Okay? So, by seeing more and more of this material... It creates this 
fantasy. Okay. Well, can you go back to her to that question again? The satire one or the satire? Yes, yeah. yeah, I want to tie this in. Uh, I don't want to not tie it in. I don't know if I can. I can go find it. Hold on. Make sure I have the chronological order. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I don't know, man. I think I screwed the pooch okay, on that. Fine. That's fine. Okay, so what working. happens is it's it's like building blocks, okay? Because their fantasy gets bored, boring, okay? So they have to recreate another one. In a different way, because what happens is once they act on that impulse or that act, okay, then once it's over, either A, they didn't think it was going to go the way they thought it was, and it never does. It never mm -hmm. goes the way they think it does. Okay? So they start looking for another avenue to fulfill a different fantasy. And this is why these guys go down this pipeline of m more and more crude and worse and worse, worse material, right. i.e. They, they, they start hitting, you know, stuff, sadistic, you know, stuff and all this other stuff. Okay. Now here's the key about children. Okay. The fact that he has a history when he was, according to a victim, five of them, one specifically at the age of 12, he was the suspect at that point, and the victim was five, right? We have to say to ourselves, okay, what's the relevance of that? All right. Well, the relevance is very important because that is what we would call a potential victimology selection all right and so that's that's obsessive fantasy in that victimology age frame uh, age group okay and now you overlay that into summer and and then you want you want to start working backwards from her five four three two one in talking to Don, and what do we learn when we talk to Don? Quote, I can't believe she was into me that much. I can't, you know, I remember all this, okay? Yeah, I did that to my sister, but we were younger, and, you know, how, what, well, Don, how old were you? Or how old was she? Oh, well, that's not really important, man. Well, yes, it is. How old was she? Well, that's not really what well, well, she was five, Don. Do you remember that? And then she was 12. So that kind of gives us a, a spread of what potential victimology for, for he could be, for him, for him. Okay? So how could it connect back to her? Very simply, okay? I'm going to ask that person, unconnected from her. Yeah. Un unconnected. Right? Because here you have him admitting that he is A, B, C, or D. And now we you fast forward to 2000 and what year is this? Six, six, six? 2006, yeah. These, these arrest reports that come forward. And what kind of behavior is he engaged in? sexual behavior now, now think about that so from the age of 12 to the age of whatever you know 2006 however old he is 40 something years later okay he's still engaged in sexual behavior so what don't we know about yet i will submit to you there are a lot of victims out there there are a lot of victims out there. We just haven't found them, and they haven't come forward yet. And that's typical once you are, you know hook these guys up and you sit down with them and they realize the gig is up, you know, 
then they start saying, well, yeah, you know, A, B, C, or D. Well, okay, well, can we make a deal? Okay, what, what kind of deal you want? Well, if I tell you about this, this, and this, and this, and this, can I get a, you know, can I get a deal, Mr. DA? Okay, sure. Yeah, that's a good deal. Then they right. tell you. Okay, and then you get the interviews with them where, you know, they sit there and they say, well, you've been charged with 13 counts of A, B, C, and D. And then all of a sudden they say, yeah, but I did it like 500 times. Can I start telling you? Okay. What do you got? Right. So, so I hope that answered your question. I hope it helped. But there is a direct correlation between past behavior and future behavior. Yeah, I mean, you, you said it perfect and, and, and I agree with everything, you know, and there was a follow up and, uh, so the progression of SA can lead to violence. There, there's already violence tied in with him. Okay, so I mean, he he has a history of violence, and he has a history of doing things like stealing people's well, panties. That, that's a very easy question, because look at the correlation between stealing, and you, there's a lot of research on this. Look at the correlation between stealing underwear and rape. Right. And rape is a violent crime. So the, answer, yes. so the answer is yes. Sexual assault does lead to violence. Sexual assault is violent. The in, of, in, of, in, of, in of its definition, sexual assault is violent. Right. I agree with that, Chris. I, and, and uh, you know, you've said it all. You've, you came on, you talked to us, uh, educated us. And I appreciate you doing this. Um, I, I just thought it was important to talk about and who better to talk about it with than you. I appreciate you being here, my friend. Thank you. All right, bud. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Well, there it is. Um, Chris McDonough coming in hot. You know, he, he knows his stuff. He knows his stuff, uh, very well. And so, Thank you so much. Uh, Lady May says, Don Wells, if you see this, you're a sick man. Well, I agree with you on that. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for everything you've done. You guys have a great night. I appreciate you being here. Hit that like button on the way out. Thank you for the chats and the, the super stickers, the super chats, uh, the new members, the likes, the new subscribers. You guys are awesome. Uh, and, and we thank you so much for you being here. Have a nice night. Actually, let's do that one. We're live on the air, so don't say any apps and stuff. Oh, that's better. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys because they're still here. Oh, like, nobody's you're not a cop. No, no, you're not. I think I don't go on my daughter or something. She's lucky you're holier than now or something. There is no investigation. Live from the MBD Production Studios, you're in the lab with your host, Joshua Diaz. There is no investigation. This boy has... There is not, really? This, this wow, young man...
Oh my. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Papa Poe. Oh my.